Welcome participants to lab demo 5. In this particular week, uh, we have already seen technologies related to double beds. Now let us analyze a simplest fabric which we create on double bed knitting machine. So in this particular lecture, I am going to analyze in front of you on a double jersey fabric structure. So in double jersey fabric structure, there are lot of varieties are possible, but I am going to choose just a simple fabric and how this fabric will be different from a single jersey fabric. So that is the target you will learn in this process, not only the analysis of fabric, but you will also learn how it is different from a single jersey fabric. So this fabric is actually having the symbol of 0 cross 0 cross. So basically along a course, this fabric has technical back and front loops alternatingly. So in the first column, the technical back, then next column, technical front, then back, front. So along the course, loops are changing from technical back to front, uh, front alternatingly. So in this particular lecture, we are going to analyze only this particular fabric. If you analyze any fabric, before you start, you must know the machine details on which this particular fabric is created, uh, especially uh, what type of machine they are using, what type of knitting they are using, what is the nature of machine, whether it is flat, circular, single bed, double bed, what is the gauge of the machine, what is the setting of the machine, loop setting. So all of these things you must know. Apart from that, the general behavior of the fabric, whether you call this fabric as a single jersey, double jersey curling, appearance, unraveling, fabric symbol, all of these things you should be doing in case of fabric analysis. So uh, we start from uh, the machine details. Uh, if you see this particular machine, uh, the fabric is being uh, created on this machine which is nothing but the v bed machine. So the demo number 4 was all about the machine demonstration related to v bed. So in v bed machine, this is the front view of the cam jacket which was traversing on the machine from left to right and right to left. So the loop setting is uh, again similar to the knitting in flat bed, the stitch cam setting has to be adjusted so that you can control the loop length. I hope you remember this. So here the stitch cam is nothing but denoted with the with this circle. So this part is the stitch cam. So if you rotate um, or if you slide this stitch cam from um, across this slot, you are basically changing the position of a stitch cam. So this is the stitch cam. You can see when this stitch cam is at zero position, this is the zero position, this is at the topmost. So the needle will not descend too much. So in this case, the loop length will be too low, so the uh, the size of the loop will be minimum. But if you slide this stitch cam to the uh, bottom most position, the stitch cam will reach at this location. So here the needle butt has to descend too much and carrying the yarn so that the loop length will increase. So this cam setting is 15. So on the machine, you should be knowing on which stitch cam uh, setting you are operating the machine because uh, if any of these information is incomplete, you cannot produce consistent fabric and analysis will be different. So my suggestion whenever you go for doing any analysis and if you are making the fabric by yourself, you must have all these information ready in front of you. So a stitch cam setting for example, here in the stitch cam setting is uh, approximately around 7. So between 0 to 15, uh, the stitch cam setting is 7. So after that, you can go for a structural analysis which uh, I am going to show you and you can make some calculations. Um, it is starting from yarn count, wales per inch, coarse per inch, stitch density, loop length, GSM, uh, fabric parameters, tightness factors. So these fabric parameter and tightness factor I am going to cover in next few weeks. So for the time being, these two uh, parameters uh, are also important and I will going to show you how we calculate these type of parameters. 
So uh, let us switch to the fabric. So in the demo number 1, I demonstrated you a single jersey fabric. So this is the single jersey fabric and this is double jersey fabric. So you can see the first difference which you can observe here is this is curling, this is much more stable from the edges. So and obviously I have in this week also I have given you uh, sufficient information why this curling was happening, what how the curling nature was different. So I am keeping this fabric apart because we have already done the analysis of this particular fabric. Now let us focus on double jersey fabric. So in this double jersey fabric you have technical front and back loops alternatively in coarse direction. So for analysis of the fabric you basically need to have two things uh, scale, pig glass and seizure and these are the informations which we must need to find out for the fabric. Okay. So we start one by one. So if you see this fabric, if you see this fabric, so the first thing is what are the knitting type whether it is a weft knitting or warp knitting. So naturally we are focusing in on weft knitting technology, so this is weft knitting. Okay. Now the machine type, so this machine I have shown you the machine which was used in this particular um, fab fabric production, so this is a flat bed knitting machine. Okay. And now the next thing about machine type is whether it is a single or double bed category. So this is a V bed machine, so which has a double bed, so this is made on double bed machine and the machine was V bed type, okay. so V bed. Now the next thing is machine uh, parameters like gauge, how many needles was present per inch. So the number of needles which was present per inch was around 8. Okay. So 8 needles per inch was present in each of the bed. The pitch, pitch is nothing but the distance between 2 needles on the bed, so this will become 1 by 8. Okay. So this is in inches, this is in 8 needles per inch. So you, if you arrange this needles, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so this is 1 inch and in 1 inch you will find 8 needles on the bed and pitch is nothing but the distance between 2 needles, so distance between 2 needles, so if this total distance is 1 inch, so distance between 2 needles will be 1 by 8 inch. Now the loop setting, just now I showed you the loop setting was around 7, so if more loop setting, more loop length, lower loop setting, lower loop length. Now the general information about the fabric. So this was the fabric, if you see uh, the fabric was actually double jersey category, double jersey. In double jersey also there are different type of construction, rib, pearl and interlock, uh, which uh, in the next week I am going to introduce different construction of double jersey. At this moment uh, this particular fabric is having rib construction, so within the double jersey also it is the rib constructions which we are analyzing. The fabric type whether it is a flat fabric or circular fabric, so obviously um, the edges are free, it is not bent, um, it is not a circular fabric, so naturally this is a flat category. Curling, if you see the curling, so the fabric is not curling from any of the edges, no. Appearance, this is most important part. So if you see the appearance of the fabric, I am going to zoom it, so on one side 
you can see only the leg part. Okay. Only the leg part. So, along this column, you can see only the leg are visible. Okay. If you reverse this fabric, if you reverse this fabric and again zoom it, again the nature are same. So, along this column, you can only see the leg part. So, this is the uh, difference in single jersey and double jersey. Mostly double jersey fabric appearance is same and since we are only able to see the leg part which is nothing but the front side of the loop. So, this is technical front side. So, on both side we are watching technical front. So, uh, again if you try to uh, see the back side, why back side is not visible? If you extend this fabric, you can see these two columns are not connected, they are separated. So, if you try to extend this fabric, each of these columns along a course are not connected. So, it means between these two columns, the yarn segment is inside. So, since you know the structure of this fabric, between two front loops there is a technical back loops and this is where this technical back part is there. So, if you zoom it, you would be able to see the curved part of the yarn. So, you can see here between two columns, this is the curved part. So, this is nothing but the head and the sinker part of the fabric is visible in between two columns. So, between these two columns, head and sinker part is visible of the backside loop. Similarly, when you reverse this fabric and if you try to extend, again between these two columns, the technical back of opposite side loop will be visible. So, so these two, uh, if you see these two columns, 1 and 2, these two columns are formed on the front side and between these two columns, the other loop is formed on the back side. So, these two loops are actually projected towards you, so that is why it is visible and the, and the back side loops is projected behind this plane, so which is visible on the other side. So, when you are visiting, uh, visiting that uh, back side loops from the other side, that front part will again be visible. So, this is the reason why the appearance is almost similar in this particular fabric. Again, if you try to see this fabric is highly, highly extensible. So, if you try to extend, you can see how much you can extend this fabric. So, this is highly elastic fabric. Okay. So, the fabric can be extended compared to single jersey. If you see single jersey fabric, it is not that much extensible because it does not shrink when, when, you, when you relax this fabric, it does not shrink. But if you, in case of this particular rib construction, you can with a very small force, you can see you can extend easily 100 to 200 percent. So, this is the beauty of this particular fabric. Now, uh, technical front side is okay, unraveling. So, unraveling means when you pull the yarn from the edges. So, this is the last course. So, when you are making uh, the fabric, so fabric will be actually being formed. So, this will be the first course on the machine which is being pulled by the dead weight and this is the last course which is engaged by the needle. So, once you take out that fabric, um, this is the last course which you knit on the machine. This is the first course which you knit on the machine. So, if you try to pull the yarn, if you try to pull the yarn, all technical front and back loops will be easily unravel. So, you can 
So, you can entire fabric can be unravel from the top side. Okay? From the top side. So, you can see all these yarns are coming out. So, the loops can be easily unraveled. But you can see if you see the the end part, so this is the other side, the free end of the yarn. So, this is the free end of the yarn. So, if you pull it, it is not coming out easily. So, from the other side, the loops are not pulling out easily. So, it means, so the unraveling last course, yes, first course, no. So, only one side you can unravel from the last course fabric symbol so the symbol of fabric is again you can you can make boxes cross 0 cross 0 and same course is repeating so this is the fabric symbol so this is how uh, this fabric basic information is given now um, again come to the basic structural part. So, yarn count, if you see this particular yarn, you can measure the distance, you can measure the weight. So, yarn count uh, in tex, tex is the weight of yarn per 1000 meter of length of the yarn. So, the yarn count is 192, I measured it in the lab. Uh, whales per inch, to measure the whales per inch, you can put the fabric, you can take out the pig glass. So, in pig glass, this is 1 inch, this is 1 inch and you can here put, you can put it and you can count how many loops is visible in that particular length. So, for example, here if you try to count uh, um, because this camera is highly zoomed, so you can count it very easily. So, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and slightly part because we extended this fabric little bit. So, number of whales per inch is 6 and between these two column if you see if you extend between any any of these two column additional column are on the back side. Okay? So, between these two column, additional column on the back side. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, you can count the those columns. So, all rib lines is actually representing the back side column. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, 6 plus 5. So, total 11 whales per inch. Okay? Okay? So, between these two columns, the additional column is hidden inside on the opposite side. So, you can see here between these two, uh, when you are extending it, you can easily see the other columns. So, so, whales per inch is 11. So, 6, the front loops are visible and, and five, 5 loops are hidden between the front loops on the opposite side. Uh, whales spacing, again um, this is defined as uh, distance between two consecutive whales, so 1 by 11 inch, so distance between two whales. Course per inch, you can count number of courses also. So, uh, if, you, if you try to count it, uh, you can count number of courses. You can put it the fabric in a um, so, so this is how you put the fabric. 
now you can start counting along one column. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, 9 courses is present in 1 each. So, 9 courses are present in 1 inch, 9 courses per inch. Course spacing, again distance between 2 consecutive courses which is nothing but 1 by 9 inch. A stitch density is nothing but uh, um, the multiplication of course per inch and wheels per inch. So, this is nothing but 11 into 9. So, 99 loops per inch square. This indicates how many loops are present per unit area. Loop length, to measure the loop length, it is uh, pretty simple. So, what you can do is like you can start unraveling the yarn from one side to to other side. So, this is the total length uh, of the yarn which you have unraveled. You can measure its length, the entire length and then divide by total number of whales which you count on the fabric. So, if you do so, show the loop length is actually the length of the yarn in one course was 90 centimeter and total number of columns was was actually 72 whales. So, it means 1.25 centimeter. Okay. Now, um, GSM. So, um, you can this the fabric is with you. This is the length, this is the width, you know the area, you measure its weight and you can find out the GSM. So, GSM is nothing but the weight per meter square. So, if you know the weight, you know the area, you can find out the weight. So, the weight of the fabric was 373.6 gram per meter square. Okay. Some of the parameters, one is Kc. So, Kc is defined as C L by C. So, Kc is nothing but loop length which is 1.25 centimeter divided by C. The distance between two loops is 1 by 9 inch. So, you can convert it and you can get the result of Kc. Similarly, Kw, so 1.25 centimeter whale spacing is 1 by 11 inch. So, please note uh, Kc and Kw is dimensionless. So, here also the unit is length, this is also length unit, so they will cancel it up. So, Kc and Kw is a unitless parameter. Ks is also, Ks is nothing but uh, if you see this Kc um, into Kw by L square is the stitch length density. So, Ks is nothing but Kc into Kw you can simply multiply these two and you will get it. Tightness factor, uh, you have the uh, square root of text which is nothing but 192 and loop length is nothing but 1.25 and the unit will be text under root 2 divided by centimeter. So, this is how tightness factor is denoted. Now, um, once this is done, uh, you can compare the experimental GSM which you found 373.6 and this is the theoretical GSM of the fabric. So, just to cross check whether you have, whether every, every readings are okay or not, um, you can basically do the, the uh, theoretical calculations. So, yarn text was 192, loop length is 1.25 centimeter. So, you need to convert into a meter. So, 100 and stitch density in loops per meter square. So, stitch density is, um, if you see the stitch density, 
um, 99 loops per inch square. So, 99, um, 1 inch is 2.54 centimeter into 2.54 centimeter, these are in centimeter and you can multiply by 100 just to convert it into loops per meter square and divided by 1000. So, if you do this, the calculation you will get 367.8 gram per meter square. So, if you see this part and if you see this part, we are very much close. So, hardly 2 to 3 percent difference. So, um, this is how you do the fabric analysis. So, we have uh, um, done the fabric analysis of single jersey fabric as well as double jersey fabric. Okay. So, from next week, you will learn how to make different fabric samples. So, the more fabric samples you know, make, uh, you must have to do these type of analysis for the comparison. So, I hope you understood this particular demo. So, uh, stay tuned. Uh, from the next week, we are going to start new topic related to fabric design. Thank you.